Interpretation thing. It, it, each musician they know the form of the music and the harmonic structure of the music, and uh, and they interpret it in their own way. So um, I think that makes it more fun, probably, for those guys. And it's not like a the the the, the tracks are there, but the way they interpret it can be done in any way that they feel. And because I love the way these guys play. It, I'm really happy to let them just do their thing with it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, just, I noticed when you like to play your chord, I mean, you break all the molds and all these same things. It seems like, I seem to watch like, you know, for example, the pink, you might have a melodic note, and then underneath you kind of have like this, a contrary motion interval, like maybe like a tritone and then a flat six, and it's kind of shifting that way. Do you think in terms of that, of just keeping that contrary motion on the lower voices while your melody line is going on the top of this? Yeah, I just think of the melody line and that, like moving the harmony around within it, you know. I don't think about um, terms or yeah. I just think about how the how I want that note to go to where I want it to go next and where I want the other note to go next and how I'm gonna resolve it to where it's gonna go in the end. I don't really think about um, like a preconceived um, oh, yeah, even though I do do that, you know, I, I like if I get really stuck I'll I'll start doing things that I've done a thousand times before. But for example, you might have like a fourth, like an interval of a fourth, and then that'll spread out to a tritone, and then it'll spread out to a, 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 to a regular fifth, and then uh, intervals, you know, for example. Or then you'll shift over, and then it'll maybe be on like uh, a minor six that'll spread out to a sixth, and all, but while your melody line's going on top or whatever. You know? If you don't think about it, but is there a lot of that technique? There is that technique. I don't know, because I don't think about it. You don't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Williams was, was great on your music as far as if there was ever a vocalist that fits your music perfectly, it was Tony Williams. Did you, did you like working with him? And, and maybe you, would you Tony Williams was a drummer. Oh, no, the, the, the guy that sings on uh, IOU and uh, LT. Is that Tony? Uh, Paul yeah. Williams. Paul Williams, Paul Williams. Paul Williams. Yeah. yeah. And he's kind of in the town, you know. Hey, Chase, did you another know album with him? And, and do you agree about how his singing seems to fit your music so well? More than any other singer I've heard him well, I only ever, I only ever played with one singer. <laughs> Actually, there was a couple of the uh, couple of the girls that I worked with, but um, no, he, he was great. I really liked him. He's good. Did you do another one with him, maybe? No. We don't get along. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's right. When you guys rehearse, you always just want to work on pizza load and yet sometimes have fun. Oh, it's or something like that. We don't rehearse. We don't rehearse. We, uh, we come to sound check when, when we get a chance and we play through, you know, and we had the tunes. My question is, do you ever just jam and not work on pizza? Yeah, the, the first uh, tune in that trilogy that we just did, that was a jam tune. Um, and it's different. Every, every night it's different group. I, I kind of start it with whatever group I'm thinking of. Do you ever go like in some like the blues or anything? Uh, at Soundcheck uh, sometimes no. we have. <laughs> 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 we did it uh, a couple of times. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I have a question. First of all, you, you two guys sound amazing, and uh, I just wanted to get an idea what what your influences are. You know, on drums, bass. I mean, and also I just like to know if you guys are planning to record anything with Alan in the uh, near future. We uh, did. We recorded uh, five tracks last summer. Oh, great. Um, it's in the can. Alan's been pretty busy, so I think he's gonna throw his stuff on soon. Yeah, but now they want to record it now again. Now we want to record it again because we're yeah. playing it. So we'll see. But yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully soon. Um, as far as influence, personally, uh, I used to listen to. I was. I came up like a, a rock drummer. I was a classical trumpet player. That was my main act when I was twenty. In a weekend, in a weekend uh, drummer. You know, so John Bonham, Mitch Mitchell. I hear a lot of bottom when you're playing, just the, the groove and the heaviness. It's yeah, it uh, really yeah, powerful. Yeah, they and then after that, you know, Billy Cobham, uh, then Tony Williams, big time uh, with Billy Lit. And uh, then after that, I got into the more straight ahead players, you know, um, Jack DeJanet and uh, Elvin, and got probably you know, my favorite jazz drummers. And then, of course, Gavin Dean. So, you know, I listen, I listen to everybody, you know. All genres, I, I like all kinds of stuff, and uh, you know, pull from you know anything I've ever heard. Right, so just one about your about your style. Uh, the bass players are like the guys that play on records, like old records, like Chuck Ray, <laughs> Anthony Jackson. I used to spend my last ten bucks to go see Abraham Memorial play. Oh, yeah, but I would sit right in front. Go and go. <laughs> <laughs> Guys like that, real groove heavy guys like that. You know, not so much of the uh, tricks of the kids guys. I like that, but slap and tickle. He calls it slap and tickle. I like that. <laughs> I slap and tickle too, but I just don't do it on this game. <laughs> but, but it's like that's like everybody's like when you when you start out, that's what you impressed with first. When I was a kid, that's what made me want to start playing bass. But guys I like like that, I know it's uh, Larry Graham records, and Lewis Johnson guys like that. I like that. Those heavy groove guys. <laughs> I have a question for you. When you first were approached or how you hooked up with them, you had to learn the song. <laughs> what was that like for you? Unless you played, you played play a polyphonic instrument where you can make more weird chords? Well, what happened is Joe called me and asked me. I'll tell the story real quick. He called me and says, hey, you want to do a gig in San Diego? I'm thinking it's just any gig. And I go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, I said, who's it with? With Alan Holsworth. Now, it's like Wednesday evening, and it's a Saturday night. I'm going, are you crazy? Because I already heard he didn't, he, he's not going to write out charts for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, oh, if you don't sleep for two nights, you can learn the music. So I was like, like challenging me. So then I said, OK, I got to take this. Well, some of it I transcribed, and some of it I stole charts from other bass players. <laughs> like I, I went down and caught him on the show with Gary Willis, who's one of my other favorite oh, favorite people and favorite bass players. And he he um hooked me up with a chart and I wrote some stuff. Uh, so you walked in there with no sleep on two days learning oh, yeah. possible music. And then when I walked in, they were like, uh, we're gonna go and we went to a coffee shop or something. I'm going, Are they crazy? We should be rehearsing now. So <laughs> got like two hours rehearsals, got some train breaks in there, but overall. No, it was great. <laughs> this guy came in there that day and he played awesome. It was great. After all, yeah. 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 He's been there ever since. Yeah. Yeah. So, how did you get to meet uh, the drummer? He obviously introduced you to the bass player. How did you meet such a, uh, a young, a great drummer? And, uh, and how many drummers did you go through before you found him? <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about your girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> no, just the <laughs> Joel. <laughs> no, I, I met Joel. I met Joel through Jeff Berlin. Um, probably Joel can tell the story better than I can. Um, oh, uh, I was teaching at MI uh, Business Institute. Uh, I think it was like around 93, and uh, I used to do some play down classes with Jeff Berlin, who used to be in, in Jeff's band for a while. And uh, Alan got called to do a clinic at MI, and so Jeff uh, 
Chad being out of town and needed a, a drummer. So Jeff called me up and asked me if I was interested in doing it. I said, of course. So went down, we, uh, we jammed, we, we did like three or four jam tunes, just totally open. And then we did Water on the Brain, which Berlin wrote out at uh, Soundcheck. We ran through it a couple of times, and that was that. And then, um, uh, like a couple of years later, uh, when Chad moved down to Australia, he called me to do uh, Catalina's. This is a jazz club in Los Angeles for a week, and uh, I did that, kind of just subbing, and then just kind of kept in touch. And then, you know, three, four years ago, we hooked up again and asked me if I wanted to do it. So. We played a lot with Joel, with uh, Dave Carpenter. That was the original trio. That was the original trio. And, and then uh, with Gary Novak and Dave for a while. And then went back to Joel again. And then I met Ernest. And it's kind of been this trio for a while. Yeah. Three years. Works well. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, No, I, I love working with keyboard players. It's kind of because you can play more music, more different music. A lot of the, a lot of the tunes that I've written and maybe a lot of the tunes that I'm going to write uh, would be a, yeah, better with a trio, with a quartet, you know, written for a quartet because there's other things going on besides just the... So it limits the music kind of considerably to do with a trio. So you have to select the ones that will work or the ones that I can play without the support of a keyboard player. So it, it cuts a lot of the music out and also it makes the tunes a lot shorter because you've got two soloists, or three if the bass player solos too. But, so, you know, like 10 tunes with a keyboard player can last a long time. <laughs> <laughs> 10 tunes with a guitar player will run out of ideas, runs out really fast. But it's, uh, no, I love playing with a quartet. It became, in, in the initially it became a, like a financial decision, because Steve used to live on the west coast and everybody wants to pay you less and less and less and less to do the same thing, so... But that's the way it goes, huh? <laughs> yeah, it did. It made life easier for me at times. You know, if you feel really bad and you've got a keyboard player, I can go back there and have a beer and you come back and he's still playing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably one of the greatest guitar albums ever recorded was you. What was that like working with Frank? I'm also a big fan of his playing, and I think you two are just probably the most proficient and inspiring musicians uh, ever, at least in the jazz world. Well, what Frank's, was that like working with Frank? Oh, he's ridiculous. He's insane. <laughs> <laughs> he's nuts. He's great. Well, it's great. I love the guy. He's an incredible guitar player and a great musician. And I mean, my, I, I did it as an after, I wasn't there when they did the tracks, you know, they did the album first and then they called me to play solos on it, so I wasn't there at the same time as the rest of the guys. But no, it was a cool experience, I loved it and I, I really enjoyed participating in it. He's an incredible guitar player. Some of you use chorus pedals, but you play sort of like you use a chorus pedal, but, but you don't actually do. Well, that is a chorus pedal. Oh, so you do, have you used chorus for a long time? For the clean sound, yeah. Yeah, it really fits. The, do, you, do you use a lot of major sevenths and, and then invert them a lot, or is it a bit of everything? A bit of everything. Me <laughs> out? Yeah. yeah. Uh, one day, the lead channel, the distortion, is going to come up just a little bit more because it can't hear it back here. And well, two, it should be right here, but it's going to be loud. Sorry. Two, what kind of beer do you drink? <laughs> what? That's available? Yeah, that's available around the corner here. Yeah, that's your favorite beer. Anybody else? Yeah, you drink Coors Light? Yeah, I drink Coors Light. 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 Yeah, <laughs> I had to drink all the shitty beer that I drink. You like Al? Sounds or Al? Both. What do you guys like to drink? 
<laughs> Whenever we can get our hands. <laughs> Alan, Alan. Oh, I do, yeah, but you can't find it. Did you ever play with Van Halen? Like jam with them? Because I know I he, idolized, he always idolized his style I of playing. We played, uh, well, we played the gig with, uh, with the original band with Paul Williams and... Uh, no, actually, it was Chad and Jeff Berlin. It wasn't the original band, the second band. It was Chad Blackerman and Jeff Berlin. And uh, we played one of Eddie's tunes. He got, we played at the Roxy. And then he, he kind of sat in with us on the one tune, so we just played one of Eddie's tunes. Do you do any finger taps yourself? Because it almost sounds no. like you're finger tap. No, I mean, I've one, done one like a little bit wrong. here and there, but yeah. no, I don't typically don't. Mm. Yeah. Your vibrato is very uh, viol you know, violin sounding. I mean, did you have a violin background growing up, or did you play it uh, at all as a kid? I played violin for a while, but it was a long time after I'd played guitar. Uh, I'd been playing guitar for many years before I found the violin. And uh, I really loved the violin, but I never... I didn't stick with it. You know, I found it... I just wish somebody had to give me a violin when I was, like, really little. Because I felt comfortable on it. It felt pretty good. But by that time, I'd kind of gotten into playing chords and stuff, and it was like such a struggle trying to figure out how to play one instrument and then flitting from one to the other and I see other people that play a lot of different instruments that have like a kind of a you know struggle going from one to the other like say Gary Husband is a wonderful piano player and he's also a really great drummer and if he had a bad night on the drums he would want to quit and play piano and then he'd have a bad night on piano then he'd want to go back and play the drums so it's like I, I don't know if I was up for that kind of a hard time, you know, it's like, it just seemed like one instrument was plenty, so I stopped playing it. But I did like that kind of vibrato, you know, the, the, the more like classical vibrato as opposed to bending, it's just a different sound. There's one tune that catches everybody's eye, it's the one Not like it so much. I'm killing this guy, okay. It's all going to be okay, son. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. So, Holdsworth, about uh, 22 or 23 years ago, we dedicated my father's place on Long Island in Roslyn to Steve Morris and Steve Howe made a guest appearance. Uh, I think Jeff Millen was, was playing bass that night and he had the vocals with me. Uh, can you give us some reflections on that gig? Do you remember playing that gig? I, I remember Steve Morse because we did a lot, a lot of touring with we two bands, two family and my band, we would go out like, on the road for it. Actually, we did a couple of tours, but I don't remember ever seeing Steve Howell. I came out and did an encore with, uh, with Steve Morse. Did you get Oh, I wasn't there. I mean, if I, we must have left the building. I didn't see Steve Howell. I saw Steve Morse. I'm a huge fan of him. He's great. Yeah. people like Jimmy Page and Alex Lyson? Yeah, they're all cool. How do you like carving guitars? I see you they, They're wonderful. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, I was playing a carving for, by the way, I still have a bunch of them. I play them most of the time, except I love headless guitars. So uh, I have a hard time going back to the guitar with a headstock. We try to the guy who made this guitar designed a new guitar that does have a headstock that I really like. And it's the only guitar that I've played in like 20 years that has a headstock that I like. So we're going to take it down to Calvin next week and see if they'll be interested in manufacturing it. How much is that guitar good for? This guitar? Oh, I don't know. Like Three thousand dollars or something. But you got to wait a long time. His card says. Luthier from hell, you get what you wait for. <laughs> <laughs> this guitar says 1996 on it, and I got it in 1999. So you gotta wait a while. Yeah. <laughs>